Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering what is inter-process communication and then I will explain difference between lock and R lock. Guys, I have uploaded a complete Python programming subject tutorials. I will provide link in description, you can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is inter-process communication. But before that, you need to know what is meaning of process. Program which is under execution is known as process. IPC is a mechanism which allows the exchange of data between processes. By using inter-process communication, we can exchange data between multiple processes. And by using inter-process communication, we can exchange resource and data between multiple processes without any interference. This diagram of inter-process communication. By using inter-process communication mechanism, we can establish communication between multiple processes. Now I am establishing communication between process 1 and process 2 by using inter-process communication mechanism. Similarly, process 2 and process 3 and process 2 and process 4. Processes that execute concurrently in the operating system may be either independent process or cooperative processes. Processes which execute concurrently. Concurrently is nothing but parallel execution. Processes which execute parallelly is known as independent processes or cooperative processes. I will give one example. For example, let us consider there are three processes. They are process 1, process 2 and process 3. What is serial execution? Only after executing first process, second process will be executed. And similarly, after executing second process, third process will be executed. This is known as serial execution. Serial execution is nothing but only after executing one process, other process will be executed. And whereas in parallel execution, all these three processes will be executed at k time. This process 1, process 2 and process 3. All these three processes will be executed at k time. This is known as parallel execution. And we also call this parallel execution as concurrent execution. And this parallel execution is done only if processes are independent to each other. Processes which do not depend on each other is known as independent process. And cooperative processes mean processes which are cooperating to each other is known as cooperative process. A process is independent and it may or may not be affected by other processes executing in the system. If a process is independent, it may or may not be affected by other processes. For example, this process P1 is independent process. So this process P1 may be affected by process P2 and P3 or this process P1 may not be affected by this process P2 and P3. And what is meaning of independent process? Any process that does not share data with any other process is known as independent process. Process which does not share data between other process is known as independent process. We call this process P1, P2 and P3 as independent process because this process P1 will not share data with P2 and P3 and similarly this process P2 will not share data between P1 and P3 and process P3 will not share data between P1 and P2. So we call this process P1, P2 and P3 as independent processes. Any process that shares the data with other process is called cooperative process. Process which shares data between other process is known as cooperative process. Here process P1 is sharing data between P2 and P3 and similarly process P2 is sharing data between P1 and P3 and process P3 is sharing data between P1 and P2. Processes which exchange data between each other is known as cooperative process. Independent process means process which does not share data between each other. Processes which execute concurrently that is nothing but process which execute parallelly can be either independent process or cooperative process. But what is the reason for process cooperation? There are four reasons for process cooperation. First one is information sharing. Second one is computation speed up. Third one is modularity. And fourth one is convenience. First one is information sharing. There are so many users and these users want to exchange information between each other. So in order to exchange information between each other, we need cooperative processes. By using cooperative process, processes can cooperate between each other in order to exchange information. And next one is computation speed up. For example, there is one big task. What we need to do is, we need to divide this big task into smaller subtasks like task 1, task 2, task 3, so on, task n. And dividing this big task into smaller subtasks. Now we need to execute all these tasks parallelly. If you execute all these tasks parallelly, then this task will complete faster. And in order to achieve this, we need process cooperation. This is second reason. And third reason is modularity. A system can be constructed in a modular fashion, dividing the system functions into separate processes or threads. 
modular fashion is nothing but for example there are functions present in my system we need to divide these functions into processes or threads this is known as modular fashion fourth reason for process cooperation is convenience for example each and every user will work on multiple tasks at the same time for that purpose we need process cooperation there are two fundamental models of inter process communication and that first one is shared memory and next one is message passing shared memory is nothing but a region of memory is shared by cooperative process in order to exchange information and next one is message passing communication is established by message exchanged between cooperative process this is known as message passing these are two fundamental models of inter process communication next i will explain difference between lock and or lock there are two states of lock first one is locked and next one is unlocked but what is lock lock is nothing but it is a class in threading module and this lock class contains two methods they are acquire and release the acquire method is called it locks the execution and blocks its execution until the release method is called whenever we call acquire method it will lock the execution that is nothing but it will block execution and if you want to unlock execution then you need to use release method whenever you call acquire method it will lock execution and whenever you call release method it will unlock execution locks helps us in efficiently accessing a shared resource in a program in order to prevent corruption of data by using lock we can efficiently access shared resource in a program and it will helps in preventing corruption of data if you use lock it will not destroy our data it follows mutual execution as only one thread can access a particular resource at a time for example there are four threads t1 t2 t3 and t4 all these four threads want to access this shared resource at a time whenever all these four threads access the same data at a time then there is chance for corruption of data so it may destroy my data in order to overcome this problem we use lock by using lock only one thread can access shared resource at a time threading module contains both lock and or lock i will explain difference between lock and or lock a threading lock can be acquired only once and once acquired it cannot be acquired again by the same thread or any other threads until it has been released for example there are three threads t1 t2 and t3 for example this thread one acquired lock whenever this thread one acquired lock then this lock cannot be acquired by t2 and t3 only if this t1 releases this lock then this lock can be acquired by t2 or t3 only if this thread one releases this lock then this t2 can acquire this lock and for particular thread we can acquire lock only once we cannot acquire more than once we can acquire only once a threading lock can be acquired only once and once acquired it cannot be acquired again by the same thread or any other thread until it has been released this is use of lock next i will explain what is use of or lock where or stands for reentrant a threading or lock can be acquired more than once by the same thread although once acquired by the thread it cannot be acquired by another thread until it has been released for example there are three threads they are t1 t2 and t3 for example this t1 acquired lock or lock can be acquired more than once by the single thread not only once this t1 can acquire lock more than once for example this thread one acquired lock twice so by using acquire method we can acquire lock although once acquired by a thread it cannot be acquired by another thread until it has been released whereas lock can be acquired only once by the single thread and whereas or lock can be acquired more than once by the single thread and once or lock is acquired by the thread it cannot be acquired by another thread until it has been released i acquired lock twice so i am releasing this lock twice this is simple example in order to create or lock i am taking one variable i am taking variable name as lock you can take any name i return lock equal to or lock whenever i write this line of code it will create reentrant lock and if you want to acquire lock then you need to write variable name dot acquire by using acquire method we can acquire lock i return here lock dot acquire and similarly if you want to release lock then by using release method we can release lock so just write here variable name that is log dot release this is simple example importantly each time the threading or lock is acquired by the same thread it must be released the same number of times until it is available to be acquired by different thread i already said before how many times you acquire lock that many times you need to release this lock that is nothing but how many times you call acquire method that many times you need to call release method whereas lock object can be acquired only once and the or lock object can be acquired numerous number of times a lock object can be released by any thread 
an R lock object can be released by thread which acquire it. For example, this thread T1 acquired lock. So this lock can be released by either T1 or, or else any other thread can also release this lock. For example, this T2 can also release this lock. For example, this thread T1 acquired R lock. Whenever this thread T1 acquired R lock, only this thread T1 should release this lock. This is difference between lock and R lock. A lock object can be owned by none and R lock object can be owned by many threads. Execution of lock is faster and whereas execution of R lock is slower when compared to lock. These are differences between lock and R lock.